This is Comrade Net, Cleric of Public Relations. You're about to watch a video, well, it was a stream, and I was, I saw the stream as it was live. I even interacted uh, with uh, both of the people in this video. Uh, one is the Lumpen Maoist, and the other is Red Pagan. Uh, this is very welcome solidarity as because, well, with you know, we, we see a parallel currently between anti-Semitism and transphobia. Um, Kara, the Lumpen Maoist, and Nicole Red Pagan uh, together give a joint statement of solidarity and support to Dr. Weisfeld, the chairman of the revolution. A bit of a heads up and a warning uh, for those who might have sens sensitivities about such things. Uh, Kara says, quote, fuck the God of the Old Testament, unquote and I have no idea what that means. But that is largely her fiery personality. Um, there's a lot of honesty about United Fronts in here, and also the dissing of popular fronts, which nobody here wants, and, you know, it's difference between that and United Fronts. I do hope everybody enjoys this presentation. And we're live uh, here to talk about the recent anti-Semitic attacks against the Jewish Labour Bund using Dr. Weisfeld as their specific target to slate said movement. Um, <laughs> we're going to first go through the press release and then talk about another positional point that has been released by um uh the the uh comrades of dr weisfeld in support of uh weisfeld's uh voice still continuing to be heard because there has been a censorship of uh socialist materials produced by the bundist movement by the zionists using this situation as an excuse to engage in inter uh, anti-intellectualism um behaviors typically found in Fascism, Nazism, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, <coughs> the, um, uh, what's it, uh, 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 and, um, why's my brain going blank? Uh, <laughs> I'll just fucking get on with it and we'll fucking see where things go. I fucking can't remember. <laughs> Uh, communique de presse um, charge of mischief graffiti under £5,000 charge of the criminal code of Canada made by the Montreal CGA uh, Federation Combined Jewish Appeal um, uh, one coming square <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> That's a funny name. I know who it's named after, but it still makes me laugh. Um, charges against Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, PhD, uh, Administrative Secretary of the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians, a Socialist Bund chapter of the SocialistBund.net, um, Doctor in Political Science from the University uh, Université du Quebec en Montréal. Uh, I don't speak French, so I probably butchered that. But I, I, what do you expect? I'm I'm part English to some degree, so there is going to be some fucking up of the French <laughs> concerning the writing of quote a. Uh, uh, um, a writing of, quote, and a free Palestine, end quote, on the Israel Day parade sign in front of the Jewish Community Center of Montreal. Um, this case is the issue of censorship of the Jewish community members whom chose to criticize or oppose the governments uh, 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 of the state of Israel. The specific charge against Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, Ph.D., is in an a is an action against the Canadian Jewish Socialist Bund uh, Socialist Bund chapter 
by the political ideology propagated by the Zionist Party representatives in the Montreal CGA. The initial court hearing on August 21st of 2023 will begin the defense of the Jewish Bund, um, uh, a national organization against the pro-Zionist domination of Jewish community. Um, uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld is a second generation Holocaust survivor whose parents fled from Warsaw and Lublin in Poland. The Jewish Bund was and is the Jewish civil rights movement that chose to resist fascism rather than abstain. It should also be noted that Weisfeld is currently applying for Polish citizenship under the right of return law of Poland. Currently, the governor of Warsaw refuses to recognize Jewish refugees as citizens of Poland for the lack of a passport identification, which was impossible to obtain during the Nazi occupation of Poland. Um, um, uh, the indictments will be in French. Um, <laughs> accusation de mefat graffiti de moines de five thousand dollars de code uh, criminel du Canada portier uh, parler. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you stick some fucking foreign stuff in front of me, and I'm gonna try and read it. Um, Le Ericteur um, and uh, Palestine Libre. Um, I'm going to stop. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. Essentially, it's basically, um, yeah, just it's translated to what was, I think, up in the starting, uh, the English version, just basically the charge of graffiti uh, under 5,000 of the Criminal Code of Canada uh, that was made by the uh, Federation of Combined Jewish Appeal. Um, I also, um, there was a, statement that was also released by um the jewish boon well by the alliance of concerned jewish canadians um uh, they uphold the academic and jewish rights of administrative secretary dr abraham weisfeld phd to be heard by the jewish community in particular and the general public as well such censorship such censorship is reminiscent of communist party control mechanisms as well as right-wing fascist practices such rep uh, repression of the Jewish Bundist perspective is merely the dogmatic and sectarian efforts of declining ideological positions held by the Zionist lobby in Canada and elsewhere. We appeal the academic community to voice their concerns against censorship in this case, as well as supporting the general freedom of expression or political expression in particular. So, yeah, um, basically it was about... Um, last week was when we heard uh from weisfeld himself that he was being pursued that ch criminal charges were being pursued against him um by um yeah by the the, the these l zionist lobbies in canada who basically got all butthurt because he he spray painted free palestine on a freaking poster that costs what literally one Canadian dollar, which, which is like what you know, I'm probably like yeah, like let me actually do like the conversion. It's here, um right? a one Canadian dollar goes to about fifty cents, so it's about thirty <laughs> some pence, forty some pence. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, because it's about showing about yeah. It's showing about three quarters, basically, in, in the United States. So it's like literally something like I don't even know anything in the United States, that, or at least not where I live, where I can buy something for a dollar, much less 75 cents anymore. I don't even think I can get a freaking waffle cone for that anymore. There are places and, where you can buy it, like, but the stuff is horrible. Aldi will sell you shit for a dollar, but it's it's the Germans ripping you off with some dodgy crap. <laughs> but yeah, it's just this whole thing is ridiculous, and it's like, like literally, if they're that butthurt, it's like hell. I'll fly to Canada myself just to hand hand them, you know, three, you know, U.S. 
you know, quarters and be just kind of, kind of like, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Like Three you U.S. Know, quarters. Like... Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> I mean, it's like, the sign know, up yeah, most you, you would be features, worth... Like... The sign up most would be worth twenty bucks. It couldn't be worth any more than that, and it depends on whether it's made exactly. and it's out of paper. If it's made out of paper at home, it's a buck because you're spending about like I mean, <laughs> this is a community center, so they're buying paper in bulk. So uh, that's gonna cost a buck all. If it's a wooden sign, it's gonna cost more than twenty thirty dollars. Um, the fines yeah. are gonna end up coming up at some at like a few hundred bucks at the cheapest. It's in the five grand ratio, so like anywhere from one dollar to five grand, he could be charged. Uh, normally, minimum charges for crimes are about fifty to a hundred bucks or pounds or whatever weird smackaroonies you use as coins. Yeah, um, that's literally. I think that this whole thing is just you know a ploy for them to essentially get free money, you know, out of you know out of somebody by you know, using the bourgeois legalist system to get what they want. And that this, was what we were kind of talking it's about. It's not like a week so ago. much just about that. They're also doing civility politics in the same way that trans, uh, like, well, yeah. like a lot of transphobes do to us as yeah. well. Yeah, well, and that's the very thing, too. They're using those civilian and, you know, bourgeois legal means to essentially um you know to essentially go you know go after you know people that they disagree with people who are you know in leftist circles and you know it's in the very to be quite honest it's in the same vein that you know a lot of these uh right wing fascists in America are currently going after the LGBT community and it's just in this case it's just a lot more underhanded and you know it's a lot less of, it's a lot less violent with this one is but i would match it up to the way that republicans attacked uh people protesting uh abortion rights recently it's civility politics yeah it's politics that claims that if you do anything that isn't petitioning the government you're violent you're uncivil and therefore must be dealt with that's what yeah. mischief laws were literally designed to do there is no such thing as being too mischievous at a protest if you're too mischievous at a protest and you're causing trouble the people that want shit done are going to beat your ass into the high heavens no one is going to take your <laughs> shit that's going to ruin their chances of getting their things if you're going to be fucking bashing about it's like there is no need to civil protest protest does not have to be civil uh, it can be as aggressive as it wants to be Weisfeld, what they did is incredibly light. Like, it's it's so pathetically light, it shouldn't even be considered a thing. The sign should have been taken down and it should have been shrugged off. But because it's also yeah. vandalism, although it's act of protest vandalism, which does, is, it's supposed to have different connotations to it, but that is being forgotten about because it's not being treated as civil protest. It's being treated as him wantonly protesting, as if He's not backed by an yeah. entire group of Jewish people that have discern with the laundering of Israeli fascism over the Jewish community in Canada. Um, and civility politics is violent. It's very violent because what it does is yeah. it puts its boots on the heads of people in the lower class and has a stump out. And people like Weisfeld, who are in better positions, whom are like PhDs and intellectuals, well, what they will do is with, with people like that, and Weisfeld worked his fucking ass off to get to where he is. He's gone through fucking all sorts of different fucking degrees of poverty and struggle. They'll strip him of his ability to do what he needs to do. They're not going to strip him of his PhD. Though. What they'll do is they'll strip him of his intellectual accessibility to the Jewish uh, community in Canada as much as they can. Um, and essentially strip him of, of his, you know, pretty much of his ability to you know his ability to collect an income pretty much you know because like you know a lot of what you know he does you know is you know trying to well he you know he's a professor he's a teacher he's an educator that's what he does oh he's already he's already blacklisted when it comes to universities like he's, he's yeah yeah, no, like, uh, no, what I'm saying is they're not going to affect his, you know, like his PhD position. They're going to affect his relationship to the Jewish community. That's all, that's all they can do. Yeah. 
Um, this point comes here. Jewish Public Library refuses to accept donation of Weisfeld's book, The Palestinian, uh, the Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, second edition. Note here the translation of police notice that, quote, also on April 18th, 2023, you left a copy of your book, quote, The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, second edition, end quote, at 5151. Chem de la Cota, Santa, uh, Santa Catherine, Montreal, butchered. Um, your book <laughs> was given to me because they do not wish to add it to their library correct collection. And I would like to deliver your book to you with your approval by mail, end quote. Um, this unprecedented, unprecedented censorship of a Jewish academic's book by the Jewish Public Library is in contradiction with the stated purpose of a library and a Jewish library in particular. Considering that I already have three books accepted by the library, one is obliged to consider that this decision is purely political and not academic. Such an action corresponds to the recent complaint to the police concerning the words and a free Palestine written on an Israeli day parade poster place yeah it's a poster so dirt cheap it was probably printed on a fucking inkjet printer probably a bar um <laughs> probably uh, like an hp or something yeah <laughs> holy penis but the um <laughs> israeli day poster placed on the public domain in front of the jewish community center which houses the uh jewish public library um and then it gets into what Pagan had read prior into the Alliance Concerned Jewish Canadians. Um, uh, and the, we appeal to the academic community to voice their concerns against censorship. In this case, as well as supporting the general freedom of expression or political expression in particular. I'd have used and that instead of or. Or rhymes, uh, like works as well, sorry. But I'd have said and that of political expression in particular. Yeah, having an autism moment, I'm like, I could rearrange <laughs> these words. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, the situation is very much that. I mean, it's it. it Weisfeld's already a blacklisted person when it comes to PhD stuff. Uh, his work is centered on the stuff he does, um, within his socialist activities for the most part, and then um, uh. Uh, other other small bits of work like he doesn't he doesn't get to do lectures and stuff and teaching the guy has been blacklisted um and so uh weisfeld is already in a situation where he is isolated from the academic community in a way um he's already been getting a lot of disrespect from people he used to academically relate to and have relationships with uh but that's not the topic of this video um what the what the Israelis are trying to do here, uh, the interests of Zionist fascism, is to completely silence him from the Jewish community because his books stand in stark contradiction to the positions they want to push. It's the same shit that they've done with people in the past, like Finkelstein. It's pushing them out of the purview of the Jewish community. Um, to be fair, Finkelstein has fallen off his rocker in recent years, but like um it's trying to isolate them from the jewish community as either terrorists anti-semites or something in between to suggest that weisfeld is taking some anti-semitic position in this situation is just hilarious not only for his strong connections with his jewish and palestinian heritage the guy is um a second generation holocaust survivor as said before had family that were freedom fighters um in uh Vosav and leblin um you know like the 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 guys the guys heritage is fighting fascism fighting anti-semitism specifically fighting the damn nazis and so this entire accusation yeah. it holds no academic grounds it is a purely political motion that they don't want a pro-palestinian jewish intellectual who's a part of a socialist movement having a voice in the jewish community <laughs> yeah, basically, it, the, every, all of it is a combination of, you know, anti-communism, anti, well, anti, -so, and anti-socialism. It's a, you know, and in a, and as much as they will, 
not admit it, it is, you know, anti-Semitic towards, you know, someone that has, frankly, in my opinion, way more clout than they do. Because, like, you know, what have, you know, what have these people done? What have the, these people actually, like, you know, some of them might have ancestors that were Holocaust survivors, but, you know, and some of them might, you know, have done certain work, but they chose to end up, at the end of the day, siding with Zionist fascists rather than, you know, supporting the actual cause of togetherness, of equality, and, you know... An act, you know, an actual like legit solution to the problems, and that is, you know, basically, you know, the cohabitation with, you know, the Palestinian people, and you know, bringing peace with the Palestinian people. Instead, they're choosing to side with that, you know, with the perpetrators of genocide and, frankly, apartheid, and. And Dr. Weisfeld stands in the way of that. And basically anybody who is, you know, anybody who stands in the way of the Zionists' plans or, you know, especially if they are also, you know, fellow, fellow Jewish people, yeah, they're going to they're gonna basically attack them and try to claim, oh, well, they're the ones that are being anti-Semitic. You know, they, you know, wrote free Palestine on one of our posters. It's like, okay, take the poster down, shred it, and put another one up, you freaking crybabies. Like, freaking, like, fuck off. <laughs> uh, I mean, Palestinians were like the OG Arabs, and they were fucking Semites the whole time. They have fucking been in, they've been in fucking Palestine uh, bef- yeah. like, like, for fucking thousands of years. So, like, and last time I checked, um, Jesus was a Jew, and Jesus was also a Palestinian Jew. Like, you know, well, so we don't know. Things. Like, as far as we know, he was yeah. part Greek and part Summit. Like, he's maybe Palestinian. He might be fucking somewhere <laughs> else around the region. A, yeah, I mean, he's a he's a made up dude, as far as we know. Like, there's like one scholarly piece that was like that, like maybe suggests he was around, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's like a few like little, you know, things throughout history that suggest that he was either a real person or was based on a real person. Like, like that would be funny to me. Everything we know about him, if he is real, comes from Romans. Everything we know comes from Romans. Yeah. Yeah. Either the Romans themselves, or act, or the Romanists that came after them, the Christians, the the European Christians, yeah. and so like, like even if he was real, we don't have an accurate representation. Yeah, uh, Canetheus goes. It's like Jesus is also of mixed race too. So yeah, uh, we and like that, if he existed, he was definitely part Greek. That's that's all we really yeah. know. Which, and, I mean, yeah. that's like most people in that region, because Greek colonization of the, during the Greek Empire. But yeah, it's just, yeah, this, this whole situation that has uh, faced Weisfeld is, you know, all the, the idea that, you know, he created, you know, he committed some heinous act of mischief, some heinous act of vandalism, you know, or in it anti-semitic act it's like the man you know spray painted or wrote some graffiti on a one dollar poster it doesn't get you know it, it's just like you don't have to make you know make an entire you know you, you don't have to essentially make, make an entire crucifixion you know out of <laughs> out of out of this whole you know this whole situation and instead yeah they decide to, that they want to basically just like nail this guy to the fucking cross and it's just and it, just because he simply stands in the, you know in direct contrast to their views and that he stands in you know and that he also is a fellow you know a fellow Jew who basically you know who ba- you know who is a socialist who sta- you know who is standing up for the Palestinian people who believes that you know hey Maybe an entire country shouldn't be committing genocide, you know, genocide and ethnic cleansing against an entire group of people 
because, you know, that's kind of what happened to us, you know, during the Nazi regime. And two wrongs don't exactly make a right. And so, I got to correct. They wouldn't have been mixed race because race didn't exist in zero AD. Race well, is a yeah. pseudo science made up by white people. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, religious poignations mean nothing in this situation. Like, it's the actual core foundation of a colonial relationship. And what we see yeah. in this situation is the Palestinians, people of a Semitic ethnicity, um, are being anti-Semitized by another Semitic group. Well, actually, several different Semitic groups that make up the Israelis. Um, the uh, you know, there is a whole conflictory situation that's going on there between these two groups, where they're weighing in anti-Semitism. Oh, you're against the Holocaust. You're against this, but like, no. Uh, the like yeah. fucking how yes there were semites that were involved in this shit the fucking uh, there were arab groups that involved themselves with hitler there were yeah. german groups that involved themselves with hitler like i don't know the rest of the fucking nazis and the massive support they had in the german middle class so like yeah. um are we like are the israelis going to throw germany away germany's such a big ally to them are they going to throw them away are they going to throw the British away, who've been anti-Semites forever, who massively helped the Nazis come to power? Are they going to fucking throw the Americans away? No. But the Palestinians, they will fucking weigh in all the time that the leadership of Palestine was involved with the Nazis. And what? That's not the Palestinian right. people. It makes no logical sense, and Semites can be anti-Semitic. We see this with the Israelis themselves. There, um, there were Jewish collapses you know with the nazis that you know literally you know w turned on their own fucking people and that's you know so yeah and, and frankly i would even you know kind of say that in a way the idea of the, the whole concept of zionism was kind of i mean it's always kind of been there as a concept as well but i think after the war it kind of got it, it kind of got popularized and streamlined because they essentially took certain aspects from the Nazis, from those Jewish collaborators, and they basically just used, have used it for the last, you know, what, 70 years to persecute the, you know, the, you know, the Palestinian like Arabs that live there. So like um, these things were already a part of Zionism. Zionism was already yeah. an excelling form of proto-fascism in the late 1800s. Well, actually mid to late 1800s. Um, uh, you know, Herschel and all his shit. But like, yes, they did yeah. learn from the Nazis. Um, but it's they learn more mechanicalistic forms and industrialized forms of genocide from the Nazis. Their actual core philosophy yeah. comes from America, not from Germany. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, literally, yeah, that's what Kissinger... Kind of... I, I swear it was Kissinger. Kissinger went and met with Afal al-Assad and turned around to him and went, uh, the, the Israelis see you in the way we see the native. Well, they said the Indian, yeah. but I'm trying to be a little less racist about it. Yeah, well, there is nothing subtle about Kissinger, that's for sure. I can't wait for that motherfucker to die. Okay. Anyway, um, but uh, I think it, uh, apparently Comrade Net had also said that Palestine is the holy land. It's not a Jewish homeland. Exactly. It has never necessarily been solely just, you know, it's just solely a, you know, a jewish ethno state it isn't was it? you know it, is... it it was inhabited by other people before the jews originally settled there like exactly like you know and it's just and yet zionists basically treat it like you know this is like you know the the you know land, the land of the jews and that it's always been the land of the jews and it's like no it, you know it is a a holy site that is for that is for certain but it's not not intrinsically yours <laughs> it's and, been the holy you know, site for more than just abrahamic groups because everywhere is a holy site that's why i i wouldn't exactly. default to any argument of like holy lands or anything because 
it's a meaningless statement. Every land is holy to a certain group, so like. And even before it was a holy land, there was, you know, different, you know, I would say I would call them pagan, but, you know, basically there were different, like, religious groups that, you know, were going on there long before Judaism even became a thing. So it's like, you know, and it, so, yeah, it's not anything, it's not anything special. It's not, you know, some, you know, holy Jewish, you know, sacred it's, it's, site. It's land, like, yeah. to be simple about it, it's land that people live on. Like, yeah, exactly. And the Palestinians <laughs> were living there for a very long time before Zionism turned around and came over, as well as Jewish people living there, too. There's this thing called Mizrahi everyone forgets about. Yeah. And like, uh, it's why I don't like defaulting to any argument about the three Abrahamic religions and their holy relationship to there, because there are more than just Abrahamic people living in that region. So it's just yeah. like, um, it, it, there's only so far such a defaulting can come before it starts dwelling into the realms of idealism. Um, at the end of the day, the land is a land that is Palestinian, is Arab. Um, but is also of a lot of other mixed descents. Uh, a lot of people don't speak about the Assyrians in this area. Uh, because since the Assyrian yeah. genocide, everyone just likes to forget about the Assyrians as much as possible. So I always say <laughs> the Assyrian genocide is the forgotten, forgotten genocide. Because a lot of people will say the Armenian is the forgotten one. But everyone remembers the Armenian one because it's the first one anyone brings up when they think about a forgotten genocide. And so the Assyrian one is the one people are really forgetting. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know... Um, it, it was the really big thing that when those Kurds propped up and they were fucking, um, uh, what was it, the YPG, I think, um, or YPK, I can't remember. The, 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 yeah. the motherfuckers that were massacring fucking uh, Assyrian and, Islam and, and Arab people. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't think of the name of it either right now. Um Net also chimes in, Zionists and Nazis only unite because of their hatred of Torah culture, not because they like each other. The Torah culture also warns throughout the Jewish Bible and the Jewish Talmuds that uh, not to disgrace the land. I know I probably butchered that, that pronunciation, I... uh, which the Zionists do indeed disgrace. It is more than just Abrahamic religion in the Holy Land, that is true. Yeah, like they... Well, and that's the whole concept of it, too, is that, you know, the Zionists, Zionists are basically kind of like a lot of Christian fundamentalists in the Western world, but we'll use America as a perfect example, who essentially take, you know, like to cherry pick, you know, the good parts that pander to their ideology, but you know everything else that's that's in in this case in the torah they just like to basically be like well i don't i don't believe in that that's not not what you know what they meant by this and it's just kind of like no that like if you're going to be going by your holy texts you need to be you know reading the whole thing and conceptualizing it you know, as a whole, and not just cherry picking, you know, the stuff that you like. And, you know, and that's why, in a lot of ways, I say that religious Zionists are essentially, they are, they're, they're religious, they're, they're religious fundamentalists. I think I've probably spoken they, on that before, like pre transition videos where I said, stated that essentially it's Jewish fundamentalism. <laughs> well, it's, um, what's it? It's like, um, it's like Judeo-Christian fundamentalism, like it's but more primarily Jewish than than uh, American Judeo-Christianity. Uh, but like right. like America, like a lot of Jews in it who follow American Judeo-Christianity, they use a lot of Christian terminology to describe a lot of things. Um, but uh, Zionism is a little smarter in how it deploys these things, and there is a, a heavy Jewish fundamentalism that goes into it. Um, uh the um what's it um but there's a lot of different frameworks to get into here so like um the point i'm making is that it's not just more than the abrahamic religions it's more than just religious people in general that exist within a region so calling anything the holy land in a political discussion is detrimental it's palestine like it has a name just use it yeah. like 
Secondly, um, the uh, situation in regards to the Nazis, yes, they do both hate the Torah and it does bring them together. And they do both have hatred towards each other. That's not the only thing that brings them together. It's a class interest. It's a political interest. That's the driving force. Yeah. Their cultural interminglings are massively a part of it too and are in many ways primary. Um, but the actual core thing that brought the Nazis and the Zionists together was their hatred of the communist movement and the, cri the, di the crippled nature of uh, European imperialism at that era, the Great Depression. If it wasn't for the Great Depression, if it wasn't for the rise of communism, these groups would have been fighting each other to come to war, not allying with each other. And so as much as yeah. they hate the Torah, they would not have united on their hatred of the Torah. They'd be competing to whom hates it more. Or one would be showing yeah. that, like, they totally hate it less even though they actually hate it. Like, the like Zionists <laughs> tend to do, like, they tend to, like, to pay uh, lip service but nothing more. Um, and then as soon as someone finds a verse in it that they don't like, they discern it. It's like Christians with the Old Testament. They'll constantly go on about how much they still like the Old Testament and it should be kept up. And you can just bring up quotes or hours that like, but it doesn't really mean that. It's not really true. It's kind of different. You're misinterpreting it, even though you read and get verbatim. Um, the, the rape, the murder, the, the torture shit, the fucking weird way God fetishizes just hurting people. Like, the Old Testament's fucked. Um, so like, yeah. uh, yeah, um, so like, it's not the religious framework that makes the Nazis and the Jews hate each other. Um, like, sorry, come together, uh, like work together, want to work together. Actually, that's a point of hatred between them because as much as the Jews, uh, the, the Zionists hate the fucking Torah, they still pay lip service to it. They still want to act like they're the, 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 the followers of it. They're the, the, the real Jews. And anyone that doesn't like yeah, them is the yeah. pseudo Jews. So like that actually creates a point yeah, of like tension the between these two like, groups. What brings them together is a class interest for fascism against the communist movement. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're basically, you know, in, in a sense, the, you know, the holier than thou sort of. Yeah, you fucking, you you evangelicals. Yeah. The people that's just like, no, your your way is wrong, my way is right, and, you know, and if you don't, you know, agree with that, then I'm going to, you know, beat you, you know, beat you over the head with, you know, the butt of a rifle. I don't know. People that read the Bible <laughs> like fucking Joseph Smith reads his golden plates. Yeah. Oh, God. In the middle of the woods, yeah. with their eyes closed, doing drugs. Yeah. Oh, God. It's just, yeah, this this whole situation was just, it was absolutely ludicrous. And so when we actually ended up, uh, when this was uh, published by the Jewish Boon uh, last week, that uh, Weisfeld was, um, you know, being pursued criminally for mischief or whatever bullshit it is, it's one of those things that we, you know, it's like we as, it, it was really nice to see us as a community actually like strongly coming together in support uh, for him because, you know, in a time where, you know, we've got so much just divide that's, seen, that's been going on, this, you know, inner leftist infighting and stuff like that. It's uh, one of those things where it's nice to see, you know, a group of people that are actually coming together and actually support, you know, supporting this man, you know, even if like, you know, they don't know much about him, even though they, you know, even if they don't, uh, even if they've never really been associated with the Jewish Bundes movement or, you know, with the um, intercommunalist uh, convergence, it's one of those things where, you um, that has been a really great thing to at least see come out of this, something that's at least positive. And, you know, regardless of what happens, you know, Dr. Weisfeld is definitely very loved and very, and very well respected within this community. I think he has been, I think that has been pretty well solidified in this last week. And, you know, 
honestly, yeah, I I really have nothing much to add on that that part of it except solidarity with Comrade Weisfeld. Uh, solidarity with Comrade Weisfeld, and we've got to like understand the situation that comes here, the the uh the struggle that's needed to be had, the different groups that we need to form. Uh, united struggles with when it comes to fighting against these things. The war against Zionism, we can already see with what's formed out of the PFLP and uh, their uh, united front recently formed with Islamic groups, shows that there is definitely going to be a united front with Islam in the struggle against Zionism. Right. There will also be progressive Jewish socialist groups that will be involved in this and Jewish groups in general. Um, this is like, uh, you know, this is getting into the sort of radical and progressive positions these groups can hold in this short term period. Um, and obviously, uh, the, the understanding of necessary united fronts with, um, uh, what's it, anti-imperialist and anti-capitalist groups, um, that are willing to struggle for the same struggles that we're struggling, but come from a different candor, so long as we're understanding that, that this is specifically to be united front work and not fucking popular fronts. <coughs> Fuck off, Dimitrov. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, uh, and so like Marxists need to not shun these groups. Uh, you know, Marxists should learn from the Marxists of the PFLP and take up the ante and be willing to side with these groups in principled united front. We must be open with our criticism of any group. That's why I haven't hidden the fact that as Marxists, we shouldn't use terminology that religious people would use to describe these places. To us, it's Palestine because, it, you know, Marxism is an atheist philosophy. We don't follow... The religious understanding of these places even if people who are marxists themselves have religious beliefs they have to be put aside i would question how one is doing that but like um you know uh, there has to be a, an understanding that takes an atheist position on the situation however it would be altruism to say that because we're taking these positions that we should isolate religious groups that are taking a progressive position in the struggle against um zionism apartheid and fascism in general and so um we have to come together with the groups that are struggling against israel this does not mean uniting with any group that you can pick and choose it's, uh, it's rely relying uh, allying in united front with progressive uh movements against these uh against fascism we won't side with any enemy of imperialism because those that want to just turn imperialism into like uh national capitalism are trying to just step things back and not step things forward we need a progressive movement of national liberation and of uh yeah. of of uh revolutionary struggles to be pushed forward because uh we need the most if if it's going to be a bourgeois movement it needs to be progressive if it's going to be any movement really it needs to be socialist because it's not going to survive otherwise but Palestine is in a state and position that is um, destitutional, colonial, and in many ways semi-feudal. And so a bourgeois democratic revolution is going to end up being something that likely will be at the forefront of its struggles. The working class and the communists uh, uh, representing the working class uh, need to be heavily involved in this movement so that this revolution can be under political strain from the communists when need be when we must struggle when we must be ready for when that bourgeois state instantly turns on us look at any history of bourgeois revolutions from all the way back to the first with the british or oh, sorry the english they hadn't called themselves british yet that was after that revolution <laughs> failed um the uh that revolution was a unification of the bourgeoisie, um, like the actual struggle of it. The bourgeoisie were struggling with uh, peasants, serfs, and um, uh, disenfranchised folk, people that had been um, lumpenized, thrown off their land, no longer able to be serfs or peasants, uh, the diggers, people like that. Um, the bourgeoisie instantly turned on them. As soon as the diggers were like, yo, we don't want to make a society of exploitation, please. We want the land to be, like, caretakered by all and free for all to use. 
um, they were rounded up and either uh, moved into different places from each other or massacred. Um, uh, King George's Hill uh, was the main, part, uh, main, main area that occurred in. But there was a lot of things like this that happened. And we can look all the way up to this day. There's these betrayals that occur. I mean, we can look at like the um, the Arab uh, uh, like uh, coups and revolutions that occurred against British and French colon colonialists um, and Italian colonialists in the World War Two to post World War Two period. Um, you know, Gaddafi's an easy example of one who was like a literal fascist and anti-communist, and like yeah. uh, they were still part of some that was a. Uh, 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 a national liberation but it very much quickly turned to pure reaction and so we need to understand that we can't just support any group that's out there we have to be very considerate of how we look at different groups how we unite with different groups because um in palestine like if we look at like the pflp's unification with different bourgeois and petty bourgeois organizations in Palestine, they're knowing that they need to form a united front with this bloc in their struggles to get national liberation from Palestine. Um, no yeah. one said it's the same as left unity. No one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Sorry, Ned. I mean, no one. Literally, no one is saying that. Uh, I'm literally talking yeah. about uniting with fucking religious groups, which is, it, it's not like, talking about left unity. Yeah. And, and, and the situation with Palestine, it w it is definitely a lot different than it is, you know, say, you know, in the Western world. Like, I would definitely say there needs to be, that there needs to be some form of, like, left unity or something like that within the first world. But we also know that it's right, that the yeah. idea of trying to achieve that is going to be near to impossible whereas I'd... in places like palestine and you know and other places you know they need to form united fronts in order to achieve national liberation once that has been achieved then you know then we can kind of focus on a lot more of the specifics mm -hmm. but the problem is is that right now is that the biggest issue is ending the Zion is ending the Zionist state is ending you that's know, the big issue for state of Israel yeah. that's the big issue for Palestine we have even bigger issues in regards to imperialism that have to be focused on um like like that's one of the major issues but there's so many more I mean not a lot of people talk about Yemen anymore and uh, we have all the genocides in Africa no one talk about um, um right. uh, what's it um What's that country that used to be a French fucking colony near Spain? Um, Northwest um, Africa. Yeah, they, they've recently yeah. been committing a genocide that no one's been talking about. Um, but yeah, no. Um, there are different formulations of United Fronts. The ones we seek to form are progressive, so they would be left. However, that doesn't always mean left unity. Siding with fucking liberals is not so much left unity. Although in a progressive movement against semi-feudalism, liberalism would be seen on the left position of the Overton window. But internationally yeah. speaking, liberalism to me is a right-wing philosophy no matter where you end up finding it because of the progressivity of situations and how the Overton window moves. And so when I'm looking at a lot of these united fronts that could occur in a place like Palestine, for example, well, that united front involves groups that are obviously right wing. Um, but it, what we're seeking to do would be seeking to make what would be in line with left unity and what we want to do in the first world, because um, left unity is a form of united front. And that's what communists seek to build, because when you're building a unification of people and the working class struggle, you do not go looking for fascists or, or right-wing liberals. You go looking for liberals that are, are left adjacent and anything further from there, you know, and you can't be too picky and choosy. It's bringing people together in a united front of the working class. Um, united fronts have historically tried to involve other groups as well, though. Um, the middle class is constantly a part of these formulations in history, and united fronts did historically try and involve bourgeois groups we can see this with the modern iterations of these things like what is going on in palestine 
However, bourgeois groups either tend to betray them during the struggle, or they stab them in the back as soon as it's over. Um, and so United yeah. Fronts will always end up getting taken over eventually, either by the bourgeois side of things, or by a left-wing struggle that eventually will emerge organically in this situation. Communists need to be at the forefront of, of these types of struggles, being ready to represent what comes out of it, whether we come out of it on top, or whether we're fucking separating from this front and having to go our own way. Um, right. Uh, I mean, look at the, I mean, look at kind of how the, you know, the situation that erupted after the, you know, the um, February and October revolutions that, you know, and, and the resulting Russian Civil War, there was definitely a united front that was created there, but that ended up, you know, resulting in civil war when basically between, you know, the liberals and the, and the aristocracy, uh, you know, versus the, you know, the Bolsheviks during that time, that was, you know, essentially what that ended up, you know, what that ended up boiling down to. Well, it was also but the bourgeoisie like, too, yeah. because basically what happened is the whites took power in 1917. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, they and they, got ingrained because they're social democrats, which are social fascists, and so they just wanted to continue the war. Yeah. Right, and it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, but needless to say, it's like there was, you know, a form of a united front that was initially created to, you know, get rid of the czar, and, you know, and yeah, eventually we all have to go our separate ways, and we will work that out, you know, uh, you know, in whatever way we have to, you know, whatever way is necessary, even if it results in literal civil war. But it's one of those things where, you know, the point is, is trying to achieve that, you know, that main goal of the liberation of the people first, and then, you know, pr essentially preserving that liberation, um, you know, against, you know, you know against you know, the bourgeois forces that will essentially be trying to, you know, sabotage and, you know, bring it back to, well, essentially the way it was before. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's historically looking I mean, that, like, kind of what's going on in Israel. Yeah. United the Fronts palace. have had to organize with some pretty messed up groups as well in the past, like the Chinese and the KMT. Um, everyone will go yeah. on about how there's the left KMT that exists. Yeah, social democrats as in compared to fascism. Great improvement. They were united with the KMT as a bloc, and the KMT was dominated by a crazy fascist at the time. But it's like, it's, yeah. it was a temporary alliance that occurred to fight against uh, an invader. And this is a similar situation that we find with the United Front we see in Palestine. It is a, an alliance between groups that otherwise, a lot of them want to kill each other, especially like like Hamas and the communists, they do not get along very well at all. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. uh, but, um, what's it? Uh, that united front is for the struggle against Israel because once Israel is kicked out, these groups can have it out with each other. Who's going to end up getting power because they're not going to stay fucking friends, at least not for a fucking, uh, you know, at least eventually they're going to fucking separate. And that's the situation yeah. with these things. A united front is understanding that we have a common enemy and that we've got to struggle against that common enemy. But also as communists, we have to take the anti of the situation that a united front is an advantage uh, for gaining a upper ground in struggle with the proletariat because united fronts work... Uh, in the communist understanding, a united front is, uh, is, is to be centered around the working class and their struggles, and bringing that to the forefront of it. And so a communist's motion and in, in our involvement in United Fronts is to bring more forth that working-class culture of struggle and bring greater power to working-class struggles. We see this in functional United Fronts against fascism. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, the, the communists that engaged in United Fronts instead of popular fronts were the communists that actually came to power uh, through revolutionary struggle. Um, Albania is probably the easiest example anyone could pull out their ass. Um, when we look at popular fronts that disintegrate communists into this one plump group where we're all part of the same org or party, like Dimitrov de devised, is death now. Um, because 
what we see in East Germany, Poland, and other places like that is that communism crumbled very quickly. Well, by the 60s, it yeah. was dead. Like, you know, like in the political structure, in the society, no, it was still somewhat, there was a big part of people's lives. But politically, it was fucked by 66. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the, the foundations of, of our struggles and how we can build up off of these situations is through united fronts united fronts do not weaken our movement they strengthen it because we can always be there we're going to criticize everyone we get in with but you know i i stick up with the quote of lenin well happily form a united front however we're gonna be ruthlessly criticizing you the whole time so i hope you're taking notes and so we should be like that we should be putting out there why people are doing something wrong and what it is they're doing wrong and how we would see it done better and advertising that to the people and showing the it better is, way and eventually it's going it to get is, to a point yeah. where people get sick of the liberalism or even social fascism that we see appear in a lot of groups that we would be forming united fronts with and they get displeased of it and they move towards our camp um right but essentially yeah like you were saying it's this that leninist ideal of uniting you know all forms of the proletariat and it's like you know even if that you know and but you know like that that will mean you know in some cases yeah having to you know, unite with these liberal and petty bourgeois and fuck truck you know fucking you know just you know you know social fascist groups but at the end of the day we're going to end up kind of all kind of going our separate ways and you know what we'll we it, it's essentially the whole idea of we will deal with you know, the absolute, you know, firestorm that will probably come from out of that, but we will deal with that at a later date. It's like, it's not saying that we agree with any of these people. It is the fact that, you know, we're just kind of sidelining our, our differences until we can kind mm -hmm. of achieve the goal of national liberation. For instance, mm -hmm. a lot of people like to, um, um, who like to compare, um, the Palestinian Liberation Organization and Hamas, and that's the thing. All these Palestinian organizations, they are not in any way, shape, or, or form the same. They are actually very different from each other. Okay, and we wouldn't sideline it, though. We would still criticize them brutally and publicly. Well, yeah. Yeah, our differences would be I, open. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that and and that's and that's what I'm kind of getting at with uh, the whole thing with the PLO and uh, and Hamas. It's like there's very obvious, very open differences that you know these people have, and but you know a lot of people in the, in the West, they you know a lot of Western liberals and Western academics, they like to you know compare these two groups, and they're not the same. They're a group that is in a very loose i would say very loose uh united front but a united front nonetheless in which they are basically tr you know fighting for the liberation of a of the palestinian the palestinian state and once that has fully been achieved once the zionist state of israel has been toppled then they will probably there will probably end up being you know a as sad as it is to say, there will probably end up being a civil war between those, you know, a lot of those groups, between the, the petty bourgeois, between the socialist groups that are there, uh, between Hamas, and, you know, it's, but again, that is one of those things where it's like, that is, you know, that's going to end up being a situation that will, you know, that will get to and you know, we cross that bridge, but in, in the meantime, these groups are, you know, at least, try, you know, united in some loose fashion uh, for the common goal, and that is, you know, getting rid of the Zionist state of Israel and, and establishing, you know, an actual, like, Palestinian nation that is, you know, based on the ideals of, you know, cooperation and, ever, and and equality amongst, you know, the two peoples. 
And frankly, that is the that is the only way that all these people are going to move forward is going to be, you know, the is going to be cooperation. And, you know, the people that stand in the way of that, well, in in a matter of speaking, they can get the wall. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, I mean, um, Canathias, that would be altruism. So, like, a united front is a little more than just, like, um, like, it's not like we're making a united front for this is the socialist movement, because, like, that united front would be a left united front. That would be, like, anarchists, communists coming together to form a united fucking... Sh- well, anarchists and Marxists, they're both communists. Right. Anarchists and Marxists forming a united front together and things like that. What we're talking about is wide-scale united fronts. Now, in the first world, yeah, you wouldn't go looking for the bourgeoisie, because, like, we're the imperialist countries. But in a country that has a semi-feudal society, a united front would exist with bourgeois groups at times. Like like we see in yeah. Palestine, Hamas is a bourgeois group. Um, but like in our struggles as well, we shouldn't be excluding social democrats from united fronts, even though Stalin is absolutely correct in calling them social fascists. Like, yeah. if they're going to be a part of it in the struggle against fascism, fine. We just got to know that they're going to stab us in the back at some point. If people get in, like, exactly. popular fronts, they're morons. If people turn their fucking back to dem- social Democrats thinking they can be all chill about them um, during an active, like, struggle in a in a united front, then they're morons. Like, at the end of the day, yeah. them being our enemies doesn't mean that we have to take this ultra position where we just completely uh, devoid ourselves of involvement because they're bad. Um, at the end of the day, so are liberals and, uh, you know, so, so are a lot of groups that call themselves socialist. Um, if we want to get picky and choosy, we could refine ourselves down to literally just ARMLs, Maoists and ANCOMs. There we go. Uh, good luck doing anything in regards to like, uh, like Palestinian right. liberation, for example. If just the communists and the anarchists united together, they wouldn't get anywhere. Um, Right. They they would split the struggle up and Israel would take advantage of it as they have in the past. When the communists had exactly. a massive upper hand and they were struggling by themselves, whom was getting support from Israel to fight against the communists? Uh, groups like Hamas and other Islamist groups. Because that's what will happen. Right. Israel, Britain, America, anywhere will sell them weapons, will fucking give them capital to crush a communist movement. Not just because they want the communist movement crushed, but because it crushes the Palestinian movement. And that's sort of the different yeah. things we're looking at here. You have like, you have the communist movement and its levels of freedom. You have, uh, and then you also have like the Palestinian National Liberation Movement and the two different forms that that will take candor in. You have bourgeois national, uh, 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 demo, uh, uh, bourgeois, demo, uh, bourgeois national democratic revolution. And you have, uh proletarian uh national liberation and yeah. these things can be folded together we've seen this in places like uh, the russian revolution um these things can very much be folded together and that the proletariat can take the lead of the bourgeois democratic and the um and the proletarian revolution uh and uh you know uh, the two-pronged nature of how in which the bolsheviks ascertained to it with their nep structure and countries like palestine are very much in the need of those kind of uh structuralization of of uh country stability electrification and things like that that will allow for palestine to engage in a socialist construction period but um we we can't um uh, we, we can't just sort of kid ourselves and hold ourselves into one sort of um, narrow view of the situation. Because if we were to narrow view ourselves, uh, we could really dig ourselves a hole. The problem, like, let's bring up Syriza from Greece. The problem with Syriza from Greece wasn't that all these different groups came together. The problem with Syriza was they formed a popular front. They all dissolved into yeah. one party. What happened? The Marxists other than the revisionists, got kicked out. Then anarchists were getting kicked out. And then what you had left was what people were calling anarchists that weren't really anarchists, fucking mutualists and other forms of of, uh, anarcho-fascists or whatever the fuck you want to call them. Pseudo-fascists, proto-fascists, I don't know. 
fascists in anarchist culting, Marxists, uh, sorry, fascists in Marxist culting, or uh, revisionists, like that bald Greek guy that everyone likes to fucking uh, uh, fetishize. Uh, 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 what's his oh, name? I... Zizek's friend. Zizek's best buddy that everyone likes to think is a good Marxist, but is actually like shown to be a China style fascist. Was it Dengis? Yeah. Um, uh, and then you had the Social Democrats, which dominated. Oh, and there was liberals in there too. Um, and what happened? It collapsed. It fell on its ass. They wanted it to. It allowed the country to become buddy buddies again with the big old EU and limit the struggles that were starting to happen because the Social Democrats were very happy to do the let's fuck off from the EU shit. But then the threats from the EU and the threats from socialist fucking struggle scared the shit out of them. Might I point out that yeah. Greece is a place that to this day still has streets that are run by anarchists. Like it is a, it is in turmoil. It is in devastation. Um, and there's a lot of radical struggle going in to fill those holes. Um, and uh, the um, what's it? Uh, so uh, like there was a lot of precedent for the social democrats and the liberals to get shit scared of the coming. Uh, radical struggles and movements that are occurring in their country and they ran straight back to the EU that they wanted to rebel against <laughs> yeah see and here's another thing about Syriza is I actually real like this was going on like what mid like mid to late 2000s and a little bit uh, it was about 2010 the, uh, yeah and then into the early 2010s and even and this was before I actually became like a Marxist, and this was when I was kind of going through my, you know, early adulthood like political transition and everything like that. And even back then, I was like, yeah, there is absolutely no way that the that you know that that this is going to stay purely a quote unquote leftist movement and and i use that that term leftist with air quotes because it, it wasn't really truly that much of a of a leftist group it was it was like you said it was a popular front and popular fronts don't really do anything except you know essentially play into the social fascists and you know and the petty bourgeoisie at the end of the day and for and that's exactly what happened in greece is that yeah they started kicking out you know, a lot of the actual leftist circles that were part of that, you know, part of that front and, you know, essentially purging people that had radical ideas. And so, yeah, things just can, you know, continued to get worse. And eventually the entire coalition just fell, fell the fuck apart. And, um, and yeah, there are it, it just, and that's kind of, Honestly, it's not the only reason. I'm not going to blame all of the problems that, that Greece currently has on that popular front, but they were definitely a large cause of it. And because had it, you know, like at this point, it's one of those things where it's like, had they just left well enough alone and just listened to what some of these, you know, leftist groups had to say you know, and maybe formed a cohesive plan, maybe they would have gotten somewhere with it. Maybe the country would have been a little bit better off. But no, they chose to ignore them and actually purge them from the coalition. And, you know, and that's why Greece is so fucked up now. I mean, you know, Greece has been fucked it up It was for fucked a while. up then. Yeah, I mean, this economic turmoil that created this situation. Well, also maybe hosting the 2004 Olympics really didn't help, you know, either. It's like you're you're basically a country that's, you know, brokered and shit, and then you're going to host an host an Olympics. Okay, great. Now you're like indebted to, you know, the Olympic Committee, which you know, and essentially, which means that you're going to have to borrow loans and shit like that to the IMF, which means that you're going to essentially be shackled to the IMF for, you know, decades, probably, if not a whole goddamn century. Actually, it was more the uh, EU they got their money off, um, and probably well, the World Bank, because they are technically got a, uh, like, Greece uh, has right. a strong relationship with the British as well. 
Oh God. Well, the yeah. British, the British were the ones that recolonized Greece after, like, neo-colonized to be specific, but they neo-colonized Greece after the war, as America neo-colonized Italy. Uh, yeah, and it's just you know, either way, the point is, is that they're going to be essentially indebted. Um, yeah, they're going to be in, essentially indebted to Europe and you know other, and essentially the greater western powers and stuff like that in general uh for a long long time and it was you know because simply because their you know their politicians just made some really shitty decisions so yeah and this yeah politicians <laughs> not caring about the needs of the people whoa <laughs> but yeah well, even on a frigate, even if we look at it on a purely, you know, bourgeois standpoint, they still made some really shitty decisions. Like, you know, holy shit. <laughs> uh. But, yeah. And so the country making money off them, it was good decisions. In quotation marks. Uh, but the British, the Americans, and the European Union thought they were making absolutely smarty boy positions. Uh, well, yeah, that's the thing. They always think they're making, sm you know, smart boy no, decisions. No, I mean that they like know that. that the Greeks are doing stupid stuff, but that it's not stupid for them, is what I mean. So uh, they yeah. think it's smart because they make money off it. It's just Greece that doesn't <laughs> get anything off it. But oh yeah, they all think they're very fucking intelligent in what they do. I mean, <laughs> they're not idiots, so they are intelligent. I mean, no one is an idiot. The idea of idiocy, idiocy uh, like people being idiots, is is ableist. But like, they're not like they're not not smart. They are very intelligent people. They're just very alienated, and so like what you see with a lot of the, especially the big bourgeoisie, is people that have fucking functional like like a knowledge about a lot of shit but they don't know how to apply it in a functional way um fucking it's uh, the thing with that is like trump trump is like so so alienated from reality he acts like a complete utter fool he's not a fool yeah. though and a lot of that is actually stuff he purposely does he's not a fool he's n someone who i would not say is one of the smarty boys of the bourgeoisie but he's not a fucking idiot either he's a very smart person no, like they all that, are yeah. because like they all run empires. Like when you run, yeah. so a thing to note when you run an empire, you become a narcissist. Whether you get NPD or not, it doesn't matter. You become a fucking avid narcissist, and so like yeah. you are constantly overlooking your empire. You are constantly engaging in it in this way where you would have some semblance of intelligence. What does it mean for the real world? Not that much usually because. Their intelligence is about shit that most people never go through. It's crunching numbers. It's looking at statistics. It's like shit that's meaningless um, to the grand yeah. scope of living. The reason why people like Trump know so much about what I would actually be pointing to as them being dangerous in the knowledge they know is the fact that they know a lot about historical uh, eugenics and fascism and like uh, 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 you know, U.S. national uh, nationalistic tendencies and culture. Um, that's yeah. some of that shows that they are not just like, like organically intelligent to what they do as an imperial as an imperialist bourgeois capitalist, which they all are. They all do this. You don't do this and not have a knowledge of what you're doing. Like knowledge is massively taught through action. Um, it's a direct experience point it's more so that like people like elon musk and trump and peter Thiel, um uh you know uh, uh robert fucking um what's it the newspaper guy oh um what uh, murdoch yeah rupert murdoch that's the fucker rupert murdoch yeah. these people are educated fucking fascists um, and so what we've got to look at is the, the framework of understanding of the bourgeoisie is kind of bunk in a lot of minds of people because they'll see how alienating they are. A lot of people will determine that yeah. as stupidity. 
Um, these people <laughs> being absolute nutcases is not because they're stupid. It's because they're dangerous. It's because they are so fucking like powerful that they uh they um they can't see their fucking head from their ass. They're so in their own world that they. They're, it's like, uh, I use this example for petty bourgeois and bourgeois people. It's like being in different height towers of glass. You can kind of see the floor, but it's really dainty and small, and everyone else kind of walks on it differently to how you walk on it. Yeah. Well, another thing I also wanted to point out, too, about the whole, uh, about things, too, is that, so, first of all, like, the U.S., like concept like the whole concept of like u.s or american nationalism i think is just kind of a uh i find it really to be just kind of in its in its own merit stupid because i mean granted it also is very fitting that a lot of american nationalists um are you know zionists or support zionist israel because you know essentially their concept you know of being is pretty much the same they're not really they don't they really exist purely as an idea and the only reason why they still exist today is because they keep perpetuating this idea that you know this is you know that this is you know our land this is our you know this is our country and it's like okay but you stole this land from other from others and then you are you know, and you are committing, have committed and are committing genocide against, you know, against these people, you're silencing opposition and the whole point, you know, the whole existence of your, of your nation is predicated on a, you know, on false idealism. And that's the thing with, with American nationalism. America isn't like with Israel, America isn't, really truly a nation it is a it is a Prison clusterfuck of nations of, yeah it is a clusterfuck of you know of sovereign you know political entities that just happen to exist in some form or fashion as a nation it is you know it, well, it exists as a country a lot of yeah. people, because a lot of people get confused on this with the Britain. A lot of people think Britain functions as a nation, and that like the UK would be a nation, but these things are country. Yeah. So like the US is a country, yeah. but like it's a stole, it's it's stolen land, so it's an illegitimate country. Um, what the US is yeah. is it's a lot of nations crammed together. Um, and there's this myth of the white nation. The white nation is where Anglo-Saxonism and Spaniardism basically dominate. Oh, and Francicism as well. And they basically dominate the perspective yeah. on how to be an American. Uh, the Germans used to have a very big forefront in this as well. But then World War I happened and they basically got told to go fuck themselves. Uh, German was actually one of the <laughs> primary languages of America when it was fucking started up. And uh, uh, Spanish is still technically is a primary language in America. Um, uh, they won't teach you that one at school, though. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> what's it? Um, yeah, America is, like, it's very genocidal towards a lot of groups, not just black and brown people. Um, a lot of white groups get assimilated all the time. I mean, like, uh, it's one of the points we make about, like, people that identify as, like, Americans who come from Irish descent. We call them fake Irish people in the Irish, in the Irish community. Because, yeah. like, well, uh, they, they're, um, they're, uh, fucking... If you're committing to Americanism, you're committing to Britishism. That's basically what it is. These concepts are so fucking similar. It's this hodgepodgey nature of trying to suggest it's more than it is. Oh, we're more than just an Anglo-Frankish Spaniard fucking slap together. Um, uh, yeah. And so, like, um, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, what's it, um, the, the 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 situation with America is um, one centered around the problems of whiteness. Whiteness genocides everything it touches, including white culture itself. Not as violently, yeah. not as aggressively, not as quickly, but it still occurs. This is something that black comrades will be pointing out, and it's uh, 
much, uh, you know, it's it's something that they end up uh, saying a more straight answer on because the only white people that seem to end up making a big point about this is fascists because unfortunately people won't make the actual right position um, on this situation. They'll allow the incorrect motherfuckers for spewing their shit about white genocide. Um, whiteness should be destroyed because that's the thing. When you see fascists talk about like, um, like uh, how whiteness destroys a lot of european culture they do it backwards they say that like they yeah. try and point to anti-whiteness as being the problem they'll point to black people they'll point to brown people they'll point to um anti-white white people uh and like say that they're destroying the white race they're they're white genocide um when actually yeah. white race racial ideas is what's actually causing a decline in a lot of white culture because there's this idea of the unified white nation and it, there's no such thing. There is yeah, no, like, is. unified, like, group of, of so many different white nations. Just look at the intermingling conflicts in America. America has not fully assimilated everyone from Europe. They've done a lot of it. It's changed yeah. a lot since the 30s. Like, um, like Italians and uh, uh, tend to be the least integrated out of white groups. Um, and then it sort of flies off from there. But, like... Um, like uh, a lot of white groups have been integrated but like we're talking about america a country that like happily just presents irish racism as a ha ha funny or let's put leprechauns on our cereals and make a whole fucking film series about them we'll promote the four leaf well, clover as a symbol of ireland when the four leaf yeah. clover has nothing to do with ireland it's a three leaf shamrock you fucks like <laughs> it's this lucky charms crap oh me be a buddy lucky charms is buddy a's it's literally the fucking racist shit they're pushing which comes from the english um and um so like the whole framework is is counterintuitive to this idea of homogenous whiteness it doesn't exist yeah and and that's why and going back to that whole thing about how it really is just a this hodgepodge of, you know, of nations and stuff like that, that are basically crammed together in this shit show called America. It's one of the reasons why I have pretty much most of my life, even when I was a teenager, I didn't really, growing up, I never really considered myself or felt myself to be American. I didn't really, you know, I, I didn't put myself into that, I, you know, identity that I'm an American, and blah, blah, blah. No, I put, you know, I, I like to tell people it's just like, okay, I was born in California. I live in what is, can you know, the Pacific Northwest, also known as the Cascadian bioregion. So I like to, so that's why I've, for the longest time, often say I'm a Californian Cascadian. It's like, I know, but you're technically from America. I'm like, yes, if you want to put it into the broadest terms, the country that that I am basically a part of is America, but I don't consider myself to be like of that nationality, of that identity. I'm not going to put myself label myself as an American. I'm going to label myself as, you know, as being a Californian born, you know, cascadian resident and that you know i yeah and if we want to go deeper it's just like okay my family is from uh northumbria and scotland and you know a bunch of freaking you know ancestors from you know france and a few other european countries and normans but there's normans involved with this one be careful yeah well, and that's <laughs> want to go even further back like uh, my ancestry goes back to the normans because i'm um not directly but i but there is a distant relation to uh duke rollo who was the first duke of normandy who in who was born a dane and so you know which you know i could go into a whole spiel about you know how that's connection that that's kind of forms a connection with my my paganism but it's one of those things where it's like i i don't but my my main point is i don't consider you know as i call myself anything from northumbrian or, or that i'm descended from vikings or that i'm a californian cascadian 
you know, like, but I'm going to avoid by any means necessary calling myself an American because at the end of the, I mean, you know, if I'm having to fill out obviously legal paperwork, yeah, I have to identify myself as an American, but it's one of those things where it's like, I don't personally like to label myself as that because I don't, I don't, I've never felt myself as being purely American because that concept is like, again, the whole, it's a, like, just like essentially say, saying that, oh, I'm a, uh, I'm an Israeli national. Well, technically is the, the concept of, of the Israeli nation doesn't exist. There is a, Pal you know, there are Palestinian Jews that, you know, that, that land is Palestine. It's historically been Palestine. But it's not, you know, but the whole concept of the state of Israel has only existed because of, you know, you know, bullshit Western in, uh, interference that goes back to, you know, that dates back from, you know, the post-war era that I think it was what it was car It was the state of Israel was created in 1947, I believe it was. The decision yeah. was signed on in 47, though. There was a whole, like, um, basically the Palestinians were forced to sign it because um, um, the reason why the Soviets supported it um, rather than vetoing it was because the British were basically threatening to invade if a deal wasn't signed, and the, the vote basically fell on the Soviets in this. The Soviets could have done something about this, but the Soviets didn't want a war with the British over Palestine um, because that's what it would have came to. Um uh, yeah, the the British were planning to do an invasion to get their colony back that they sold. Basically, uh, it's complicated. Yeah, but the exactly. the the Israeli uh, the the Zionists had like fought for independence off the British. They did a they did a South Africa. Actually, they did a South Africa before South Africa did a South Africa because that was nineteen fifty two fifty three. <laughs> um, uh, and like uh, the British didn't know what to do about it. Who do you think was arming the Zionists? Have a guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. No, have a guess. <laughs> Who do you think was arming them? Well, well, yeah, technically the people that were that were arming the Zionists were a lot of the Western powers, wasn't it? Uh, it, was lit it was specifically America. Against the British, it was America that armed the Zionists. Um, yeah, the French, right. the French weren't really, the French are too busy trying to hold on to Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the oh, rest of their crumbling the empire. Like it's actually the amount of domination and France still has over its empire is interesting considering their empire was all they had left during the war because they lost France. Like mm -hmm. that's the only reason they survived was yeah. they managed to, uh, utilize their colonial regions. Um, in a very abusive and uh, uh, oppressive way that caused a lot of anti-colonial movements to rise up in the French territories. France has gotten financial dominance over so many of their colonies um, since the end point of this. Yeah. Uh, God. <laughs> Well, I'm def I am actually going to go ahead and sign off because I do got to start getting ready for work. But I the whole our the main reason for us doing this was we wanted to bring kind of this joint statement um, together and just talk about the issues um, that we're facing um, the Jewish Bundes movement uh, and specifically Comrade Weisfeld. Um, who I know is watching right now, and um, basically, yeah, I have really nothing really more to add other than solidarity to Comrade Weisfeld and Red Salute. Uh, keep up the good fight, and, you know, because you definitely got a lot of people backing you, even, even people that have not been involved with the Jewish Bundist movement, who have not, who haven't even heard of you know the intercommunalist convergence that have definitely um that that have definitely heard of you and your work and we want to basically just say thank you for what you you've done what you continue to do and we will stand by you through this you know difficult time and also fuck the zionist lobby <laughs> absolutely absolutely fuck the zionist lobby completely 
<laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here, but thank you guys for, uh, for watching and I'm going to, and, um, uh, yeah, thanks, Cara, for having me on. <laughs> Always happy to. Um, good luck with the with the dead beats of work. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> it's like having an untuned drum and trying to play a fucking really interesting song with it. Uh, tell me about it. It's like every day I every day that I have to drag myself across town to this goddamn freaking you know place. I you know. I always feel like, hmm, it's like maybe today's the day I just, you know, that I just fucking lose my shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel you there. Yeah. All right. Take it easy. Red salute. See you later. Red salute, sister. <laughs> later. <laughs> later. Okay. Um. <laughs> Let's biggie the square. Yeah, so like um uh if we look at the um there's something else I wanted to say about this and I can't think about it. Um Yeah, I'll end it there because I'm having a bit of a brain fart and I need to go to the bathroom. It's been um, great coming to speak to you about this all. Uh, come August, when the shit hits the fan and more information comes out, we'll be at the scene to speak about this. And um, um, it'd be nice to get the man himself on to have a conversation about this at some point as well. This is an attack against Jewish socialists and their position, or and, and anti-Zionist Jews in general, and their position of struggle against Zionist fascism and its genocide of the Palestinian peoples, as well as its uh, occupation of stolen land. Um, this should be seen absolutely as a as a direct uh, a, a attack upon these groups and an attempt to silence those who hold intellectual positions within these groups, uh, be they organic or traditional intellectual positions, and the content in which these intellectuals produce. As Weisfeld had said in uh, um, statementation, um, multiple of his books have already been accepted. Three books, I do believe, was the number by the uh, library of the CJA. And all of a sudden now they're rejecting his publications on political grounds whilst hiding behind the shield of academia. Uh, academia. Um, and so... Um, uh, the, uh, this situation is a situation of anti-Semitism against, uh, this, this, uh, against the anti-Zionist struggle in its utilizing, um, civility politics as a, as a hammer and fist to crush the voices of those whom have a lot to speak out against them. As Weissel says here, lucky I've been boycotted for 35 years since working at the Palestine, uh, Palis Palestinian embassy during the war of 1982 to 85 in Lebanon. That's when I wrote the documentary study on Sabra and uh, Shatila. Yeah, absolutely. This ain't your first rodeo and it ain't going to be your last. Um, you know, they, they've, picked, they've picked a big fish to fight with here. And so, uh, you know, all power to you in that. And you're going to come in crushing. Because even if they do end up um, trying to lay, lay, lay you with a fine or, or uh, disavow you from access to putting your stuff in the CJA library, it's just going to make you take up the ante and push harder. And as these organized groups come together and push for radical protests that do not respect this idiotic idea of civility politics, the more power that will be developed in the struggle to put the weight on these imperialist powers to oppose any relationship with Israel in the same way that it did, uh, the same way people did during the apartheid period of, uh, the, the latter period of apartheid in South Africa, where... Uh, the weight of protests put uh, an interest in the first world to um, uh, 
put a, put a re, put uh, sanctions, restrictions, and dislocations in place in their relationship to South Africa because the struggle was getting so intense. They had to do something about it. We need that here, uh, all over the imperialist core, where people are losing their shit and organizing in struggles, uh, in protests, in riots that take the anti forward in regards to uh, applying pressure on the imperialists to disconnect relations of Israel at all costs. And these protests need to not dissipate the moment that some form of uh, um, uh, lip service is given. Concrete uh, dislocation of these countries from Israel needs to be acquired in the same way that dislocation from apartheid Africa was uh, apartheid south africa was acquired unfortunately apartheid wasn't ended in south africa and so that is another example of failure in that regards the imperialists took advantage of the opportunism of nelson mandela but um in this situation uh it is much more diverse than this um oh sorry in this situation it requires a much more diverse set of struggle than what we saw in the end of uh, the end of legal apartheid in South Africa, um, we need to up the ante. We can't just keep being on our asses about things. You know, uh, action needs to be taken. Otherwise, the world is going to burn into a crisp. Climate struggle is really important for us right now, and if we don't engage in that, we're going to fuck ourselves. And so the world is in a crumbling state and a lot of struggles are coming up to the forefront. And if we don't organize ourselves uh, and actually struggle for what we need to get done, scare the capitalists into either doing something or fucking reacting in a way where they get themselves off. Like, we need action, not inaction. And unfortunately, everyone is so contempt with fucking uh electoralism all the time and not actually engaging in the tools that we have with our own two fucking hands um and that's where i'll leave it because i'm mincing my words all the time because i'm a bit too brain scrambled because the only time i could get involved with pagan on this was um the middle of the night it's 4 25 it's the weed number so we'll uh we'll leave it at that um you know, um, uh, uh, red, uh, um, red solo, uh, sisters, envies, and brothers, uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, stay pretty, and, um, we'll, we'll see you soon. I, I've got a stream I still need to do on Umberto Echo's Earth Fascism and his 13 points of fascism. And I also need to do a um, press release sort of thingy again. Um, well, it's going to be getting into details as always. ADHD plus information equals tangents. I want to do a coverage of the, um, what's it? Um, uh, bubbly, 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 bubbly. Uh, the PCM, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, is it Partista Comunista Mexico? I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, Mexican Communist Party. They did a piece on the, um, I think it's like the Anti-Imperialist World Forum uh, that is absolutely needed to be heard of. Um, ew, the British. Uh, yeah um uh stay blessed stay alive love respect and solidarity good shabbos and shabbat shalom